Hi guys, my name is Luke and today I'm going to be showing you my top 5 tips for sampling in Ableton Live. So the first tip of the video is to do with finding a sample. So what I'm going to do is move over to Google Chrome and quickly show you some search terms that help me find samples. So as you can see, I literally just put in all songs to sample. And I can scroll through here and I can see a lot of playlists, but then sometimes I can see singular videos. So what I can just come up here and go filter playlist. And you can even do more filters. So say if you can do your view count, it will sort it by the view count so you can get the least popular samples. So you can find some gems that nobody else has discovered. You can also do uh, hip hop samples. 90s I find are really cool. Then you could go playlist. See, dope samples again, a thousand videos. I mean, there's a lot of potential here. So that's the first tip of this video. So the second tip of the video is finding the BPM and the key of your sample. So as you can see, I already have my sample here that I use for this beat. It's by Apex Twin. So first thing we're gonna do is find the BPM. So what we can simply do is copy and paste this name and go over to our Chrome browser i just get it up here, copy and paste it and go BPM, scroll down here and B4 tracks normally have it, as you can see 94 BPM. So what we can do is go along and if Ableton haven't, hasn't already, but then you can go 94, but what we can hear now, it's too fast because my beat is in double time, so all we have to do is set it to 188 and it should be in time with my so basically it's playing at the same speed as the original but just stretched out to match our double time speed so that's how you find the bpm but if we want to find the key of our uh, sample all we have to do is go over to uh, uh, our search bar and just tuner and press play on the first section. And as you can see, we're in B. And what we want are 808. Sorry, our 808 in, is in C minor. So what we're going to do is tune this up to octaves. And if we go it again, that should be in tune with our 808. So the third tip of this video is about making our sample just in time. And you might be thinking, well, Luke, shouldn't it be in time already? since we found the BPM but what happens with some t some music is this uh, is this sample is from a breakdown of this song so the player would have played this live on a piano it sounds so it's not exactly on the grid so what we want to do is make this in time so I'll just give you a listen with the metronome and you can tell it's a bit out of time <laughs> So what we're going to do is, in this beat, I actually used the first bar. So we're just going to consolidate this and loop it. So I'm just going to change the look and feel just for now, just to make it easier to see. Okay, so what we're going to do is come down to just double click on the audio and you'll see this bar so you bring it up and Ableton will have actually made these audios for you so basically what these are is Ableton is detecting the transients of each uh, part of the sample so what you can do is double click it and this should go yellow so what will this will do is you'll be able to stretch you'll be able to stretch the sample without it messing with the rest of it so what we're going to do is going to gradually take these and take there 
and of course this is going to be by ear so you're going to have to take this this won't be the same for every sample so you're going to have to there take this here Turn the work mode on to complex. Plan is off there. This transient's a bit off, so what I do is come in here, turn the grid off. Take it here. So as you can hear, the sample is stretched into time. So that is the third tip of this video. So for the fourth tip of this video, I'm going to be showing you a few tips on how to get your samples sounding a lot different. So the first tip I'm going to show you is about reversing your sample. So. You double click the audio and all you do is go down here and reverse and this technique is used a lot in modern day sampling it adds a weird kind of spacey effect even just one click of the button so I'll let you hear it without reversing and then this is with reversing So you can almost hear a future or Drake on something like that. It's very good for atmospheric kind of dark beats. Metro Boomin is using it the whole time nowadays. So if we consolidate that, we have a reverse sample. And then the next tip I have is stretching your beat. So if you ever watch a tutorial uh, by someone using FSGO to make trap beats, they're using gross beat uh, a lot. And you see a feature used called halftime. So basically, halftime in your uh, your sample or whatever it makes it sound a lot more dark than the original was. So Ableton can do this, but in another way. So all you have to do is come down here, and there's these two buttons here. So half the original tempo, as you can see here, or double the original tempo. So this is just double the segment BPM. So just click this, and you can notice it instantly turn into this really warped, dark kind of atmospheric sample. So the fifth and final tip of this video is manipulating your sample with effects. So what I'm going to do is get a reverb that I have used in previous tutorials, Shimmer. And I always use these on samples because what this reverb does, it not only adds a space effect, but it actually adds more elements to the sample as I said before. it a bit with some OTT. This smashes samples so it kind of brings out different harmonics.
So if we just freeze this down. So here you have our frozen sample. So what freezing the sample does is it just takes away your ability to change the samples via uh, VSTs that you had. One, it saves a lot of CPU, and two, for me, it stops me fiddling with the knobs that I've done. So it kind of just like sets the audio. You can't manipulate it more. Just this is what you have now. Move on. It stops me from kind of procrastinating on certain uh, channels of my audio. So I'm just going to call this sample um, mid because the next thing I'm going to show you is about layering. So I'm going to duplicate this three times with uh, command D, put it into a group just for this case, sample, and I'm going to call this sample H and sample low. So maybe what you're guessing is what we're going to do is we're going to pitch this up 12 octaves, pitch this down 12, 12 octaves, 12 semitones, sorry. Uh, and put this down a lot, I'd say, because it's going to be high. Put this down about 20, and we should hear it have a lot more. So I'll show you without the layers. And here it is, so this needs a bit more of a pump. this again maybe add some different reverb some ping pong the start and finally finish it off with some EQ because what would have happened is the pitch shift down octave would uh, one octave would have added low frequency so we don't want that so that's it for this video guys i really hope you enjoyed it and i hope you learned something new and if you did hit that like button and subscribe because it really helps the channel out thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace